So, welcome back to the second part of my Falklands story. If it is your first time watching this video, then make sure you go check out the first part. It's already on my YouTube channel, Falecom Jake. And if it's your first time watching this channel, or if you have been watching this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do subscribe and hit the like button. <laughs> So after my first week, it was time to explore. I was living with my two colleagues, which are now two good friends of mine, uh, Milda, who was, she was from Lithuania, and Stephen, who is from Ipswich in the UK. I still talk to them now, and I still am very good friends with them. Uh, we were all new to the island, so I didn't feel too alone. We were all sharing the experience together. On the first weekend, we decided to go for a drive. And we were we, we found like another a town, and obviously us being from like cities, we were thinking okay we'll go to another town and it's gonna be there's gonna be a few shops there there'll be a few cafes, we'll go have a coffee or something. We arrived there. I can't remember the name of it. it was something like Port Louis maybe, the name of the settlement. And yeah, nothing there. Just a few houses. There's no cafes, no shops. <laughs> so that, that makes me think of another thing like the Falkland Islands. It, there's no like capitalism there. There's no McDonald's, there's no Burger King. There's no, there's no commercial shops. There is absolutely no commercial shops whatsoever. No commercial restaurants. I didn't have internet at home. I only had internet in the office. So when I was at home, I didn't have any internet. The islands were like 99% crime free. So I don't think I had a, a key to my house. I just left the door open all the time. Drive into the supermarket with the car, you just leave, you could leave the key in, in the car. You can just leave it on the seat. You walk in the supermarket, your car's still going to be outside. I mean, when you think about it, if someone steals your car, where are they going to go? <laughs> it's like, you're going to get caught. It's a very small island. They're going to find you. So yeah, crime crime rates are very low. They have three pubs and around, I think it was two nightclubs. Um, they would all close at 11 p.m. Um, and what would typically happen at 11 p.m. is people would all meet up outside the club or the pub and you just go back to someone's house for a house party. And like I met so many people through doing this, just like we, we the three of us were like strangers and we moved to this island. And when we started going out to pubs and drinking, we kind of like realized that well, if you want to go to a house party, just wait outside the pub and you'll get an invite. Even if you don't know the person, they're going to invite you because people are really friendly there. Um, whilst living there, I met so many different types of people from around the world, believe it or not. There's, you get a lot of scientists there, a lot of bi biologists there, a lot of explorers, explorers that are heading down to the Antarctica, um, teachers moving from all around the world, uh, conservation workers, and of course, farmers. Um, the great thing about my job was being like a journalist was I always had an excuse to approach people and ask loads of questions so anyone interesting that i like got into conversation with on the island i was always like would you be interested in doing uh, an interview for the local tv station and most people would just be like yeah why not and yeah i'd get to like film and ask loads of questions i did an interview with the former uruguayan president um, we also went to film Princess's at Princess Anne's arrival in the island, which was quite strange. I met a royal for the first time. Didn't actually get to introduce myself. One farmer that I did meet was a guy called Ben. And Ben was had a huge impact on me in my time in the Falkland Island. He showed me a way of life that's like different to what I was used to. He kind of had a philosophy that he stuck by that simplicity is the key. And he was such an open-minded guy. He had a lot of visitors come to his farm from all around the world. And he always welcomed them with open arms. He never judged anyone from wherever, whichever country they're from. And I always admired his outlook on life. So I really admired his story and decided that it would be great to make a documentary about him. Um, so the three of us, we made a, a really nice documentary about him and the journey was amazing, being able to give something back to him after everything they gave to us. He showed us his land, which had beautiful beaches on, beautiful coastline, had loads of wildlife there, his home was beautiful. 
Um, it was a place of peace. It was a place of escape. And it felt great to be able to give something back to him. And I've posted a link to the documentary in the bio below. So if you're interested in his story, please do watch it. It's fascinating and he's an awesome guy. The beauty spots of the island are usually in the far corners, like by the coast, and quite difficult to get to. It's usually like an off-road trip in a Land Rover. Um, so it's never something that you could do yourself because it, the land was so, so vast that when you if you were to attempt to go to the coast yourself you could get stuck in the middle of the field and no one would know you was there it's got to be just it can't be a proper thing it's just like nice stuff huh? <laughs> there was one little beach nearby um, and it was about 10 minutes from where we lived that was called surf bay and that's why i took the picture of the penguin uh, the penguin selfie that i posted on my instagram and the penguin on the beach And there was also another little beach. This beach was restricted because of the landmines that were strategically placed um, during the war between the UK, the Falkland Islands and Argentina. Argen the Argentine troops laid mines across the whole coast and a lot of those mines uh, still remain there. Um, so one of the beauty spots that was close to time was a little bit restricted but you could still go there for walks. I volunteered for the Falklands Conservation Group, um, which was really cool actually because I got had the opportunity to work with penguins and rehabilitate them. So the conservation group would find quite a lot of penguins that had been caught in oil spills out in the ocean. Um, and these penguins, penguins would wash up on the coast with loads of oil over the front. And this weighs them down and it removes their ability to swim properly. So the conservation group would take them in and look after them and I volunteered to feed them twice a week and also give them a shower. I've not been able to return to the island since. It's a long flight and it's very expensive. Um, they do operate a flight from uh, Punta Arenas in Chile to the Falkland Islands which operates once a week as well but it's also like you have to get yourself to Punta Arenas which is obviously very far from the UK and very expensive. They did just start operating a flight from Sao Paulo um, just last year, 2019. Um, so I myself, when I came to Brazil, I was looking at those flights, obviously before the pandemic came. Um, I was kind of considering going there because I really want to go back. Moving there made me realize that there are many different paths to take in life. Um, we can choose our own path where we want to live a lifestyle of simplicity or to live in the liveliness of the city. I've been used to living in London for such a long time that I just got grew tired of it and I wanted to experience another lifestyle. Whether that was moving to another country with another language, to another city, in another part of the world. But I found a place in the Falkland Islands that was a whole different kind of lifestyle. It's like since returning to London I've been kind of caught up in the consumerism rat race 
kind of lifestyle of you know going to work coming back home going to work coming back home spending all my my time in traffic this kind of thing whereas my life in the Falkland Islands I had so much time on my hands I had so much freedom um just waking up to fresh air in the morning <laughs> was good but you know since I've been back in London I've always remembered that I always tell myself look if ever you you really are unhappy you know what to do you just you've got to push yourself and find something that's going to make you happy and that's exactly what I did is I was so unhappy in my supermarket job but what I never stopped doing was looking for opportunities I always always was on on the internet searching for different opportunities and I'm forever grateful for big for being given that opportunity and it would always be remembered as one of the most profound moments of my life because it was the first time moving away from home. It was difficult being away from my family. Sometimes I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to see my family, but you know, I stayed strong and I knew that eventually I would get to see my family again. I, I think that like, especially during this time of quarantine, it's quite a difficult time for people mentally. So the quarantine and the current pandemic has hit the world hard. People have lost lives, of course. Um, and that's that is the, the the hardest thing. But also, people have I know people have struggled mentally with staying indoors and losing their jobs. And I, if I could say anything to anyone that may, might be watching this video, um, even as someone that maybe has just finished finished university, or even someone that's working a job that they really don't like, just remember that there's always something. There's always an opportunity out there just need to find it and you just need to be active in trying to find it um, and I hope that you know this video can inspire someone to do something like I've done and you know if anyone's got any questions um, about my experience about my time in the Falcon Islands about how they can do something like it then send me a, send me a, send me a message because I'll be more than happy to talk about it and I can also send you the job description and maybe you can apply for the job yourself it's open to all nationalities um, obviously there are some requirements such as a degree a driving license but you know if you really want to do it then I'm sure you can figure a way out to to try and do it yourself yeah that is my story about the Falkland Islands um, I, there's lots of things that I didn't tell and that's because I can I could the video would be an hour long so if this video interested you and if you want to know more information or more about the 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 stories of my life in the Falkland Islands then send me a message follow me on Instagram send me a message I'm always happy to talk I'm always happy to interact with you guys um, so yeah send me a message and if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and come back again next week because I'll be back to my language learning of Portuguese but it was nice to do something different nice to talk to you guys about myself and let you guys know a little bit more about me um, and hopefully I'll do more videos like this in the future until then see you guys next time